I used to really struggle with inverted yaw spins. Getting them fast and clean was really difficult for me until I stumbled across this trick with setting up my yaw rates that makes it so much easier. Stick around, I cannot wait to share it with you. Hi there everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how changing our yaw rates in Betaflight can make it so much easier to execute coordinated turns and perfectly flat yaw spins. We're going to be talking about how turn coordination works and how it's affected by your FPV camera up tilt. We're going to be looking at how to calculate what the ideal yaw rate is for your quad and how to apply it in Betaflight. It's a lot to cover in one video, so let's not waste any more time. Let's dive right into it. So why do we even need to coordinate our turns? Well, it's because we're working with two different coordinate systems when we fly our FPV drones. The first is the coordinate system of the quad. The quad has a yaw axis, a pitch axis, and a roll axis, and they're all independent. We also have an FPV camera, and that camera has its own yaw, pitch, and roll axes. If the camera was at zero degrees, so we had no up tilt on the FPV camera, then the yaw pitch and roll axes of the camera would be identical to the yaw pitch and roll axes of the quad, and we wouldn't need to coordinate our turns. But most of us run significant amount of up tilt, between 15 and 60 degrees, and that means that the yaw and roll axes of the camera are no longer aligned with the yaw and roll axes of the quad. And that means if we want to do a pure yaw turn from the perspective of the camera, we have to coordinate yaw and roll inputs for the quad in order to make that happen. What makes this really difficult is that the amount of roll input that we need to give to coordinate a yaw turn changes, not only depending on the amount of FPV camera up tilt we have, but also how fast we want to do the yaw spin, because the relationship between our stick input and the rate of rotation is non-linear because we're all running expo on our rates. And this means that it's incredibly difficult and time consuming to dial in exactly the right amount of muscle memory to get those perfectly flat yaw spins. And this is where a little bit of vector mathematics can really help us out. With a little bit of trigonometry, it's easy enough to calculate the amount of roll rate that we need to coordinate a yaw spin. All we need to know is the camera up tilt, and then the roll rate is just the yaw rate multiplied by the tangent of that camera up tilt. The secret is using that information when we set up our yaw rates in Betaflight. If we set our yaw rate in Betaflight to be our roll rate divided by the tangent of our camera up tilt, something really amazing happens. An equal deflection of the roll and yaw sticks always gives you a perfectly coordinated turn. And you don't need to worry about how much camera up tilt you're running or how fast you want to do the yaw spin you'll always get a perfectly coordinated turn if you deflect the sticks equally. And that's really easy to train from a muscle memory standpoint. This technique works fantastically well for camera up tilts between about 30 and 60 degrees, and not so well for very large or very small camera angles. So that's something to bear in mind. But if you're running a typical camera angle, which might be anywhere from, I don't know, 30 up to maybe 45 degrees for freestyle, this technique is gonna work brilliantly for you. If you wanna try this out for yourself, the process is really easy. The first thing we're gonna to need to do is to find the camera up tilt angle. Now, you may know this because you may be using a GoPro mount with a known up tilt, or you may need to measure it yourself using a protractor or by drawing some triangles and taking some measurements. However you do it, you need to find that camera up tilt angle. And once you know it, you need to calculate the tangent of that angle using a calculator, or you can read it off this table that I've prepared. Once you know what the tangent of your camera angle is, write that down, and then we can dive into Betaflight and set up our yaw rates. Once you've found your camera up tilt and you've calculated the tangent of that angle, changing the rates in Betaflight is really simple. Just jump into the PID tuning page and then into the rate profile settings tab. Now, if you're using actual rates, which is the Betaflight default, the process is really simple. You're gonna take your center stick sensitivity 
and divide it by that value that you calculated. So in my case, I'm running a camera up tilt of 30 degrees. So I'm going to be dividing everything by 0.58. So I divide 70 by 0.58, and that gives me 121. You do the same process with the max rate value. So divide that roll max rate, 670, by that 0.58 value that I found, and that's going to give me 1155. Then you can just hit save. The process is really similar for different types of rates. So if you're using Betaflight Classic rates, it's actually even simpler. All you do is take the RC rate on the roll axis and divide it by that value that you calculated. So 0.58 in my case, and that's going to give me 1.72 for the RC rate on the yaw axis. And that's the only change that you need to make. Just hit save and everything's done. If you're running race flight or using race flight rates, the process is really similar. Just take the rate for the roll axis and divide that by the value that you calculated. So that's 0.58 in my case, and that's going to give me the rate that I need for the yaw axis, which is 638 in this case, and then you can just hit save. If you're using KISS, then the process is identical to if you're using classic beta flight rates. So just take the RC rate for the roll axis and divide it by the value that you calculated to find the RC rate for the yaw axis. So that's going to be 1.72 again in my case. If you happen to be using quick rates, the process is a little bit different again. You're still going to take the RC rate for roll and divide it by your value to find the RC rate for the yaw axis. So that's going to give me again 1.72 for the RC rate for the yaw axis. But then you're also going to need to do the same for the max rate value. So take the max rate for the roll axis, divide it by the value that you found, and that will give you the max rate for the yaw axis. In my case, that's 1155. Hopefully, now, no matter what rates profile you're using, you can feel confident to set your yaw rates up as I've suggested and see if that helps you get those perfect coordinated yaw turns and clean inverted yaw spins. That brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope that this might help you take your freestyle flying just that one step further. If you're getting value out of the videos that I'm making and you'd like to give something back, then please consider joining my Patreon. You can join from just a few dollars a month and not only will you be supporting all the work that I'm doing here, but you'll also get sneak peeks of new projects that I'm working on, and you'll get access to a special area of my Discord server as well. It's really worthwhile, and if you're interested, there are links down in the video description. That's all I have for you for today, so until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying, and I'll see you in the next one.